Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A few days ago, I received an email from someone. They were asking me about the crop tool, specifically this constraint to image. They mentioned that if they check that and they crop their image, it doesn't seem to do anything special compared to when it's not checked and they crop their image. They wondered, what exactly is that for? What does it do? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a real world example of where constraint to image comes into play. Now, right now, I'll leave it unchecked. First of all, it really is used in conjunction with the transform tool. I'm going to close down the crop tool. Look at this image. I shot it with a wide angle lens. I tilted my camera up a little bit. So it looks like the building is falling backwards. So I want to use the transform tool. I want to make the building stand more upright. So I'm going to take the vertical side or move it to left just to kind of drag it so it looks more upright. That looks pretty good. Well, we have these blank pixels down here. Now you're probably familiar with this checkbox that is inside of the transform tool, constrain crop. I'll check that got rid of the blank pixels. But you know what? It's a little crooked. I need to straighten it. I'll open the crop tool for that. I think that's easier than using the transform tool. So I'll open up the crop tool. Hey, look it. Transform or con constrain to image is now checked. I had that unchecked a minute ago. That's because it's really the same as constrain crop. If I uncheck one, the other becomes unchecked. If I check one, then the other becomes checked. They're the same thing. So I come in here now and I want to straighten the image, uh, so I'll leave it checked. And I'll go off the image a little bit and I'll just drag it to the right so we're kind of getting a nice straight building. Okay, good. Well, now look, I cut off, in doing all that work, I cut off the top of the building. I don't want the top of the building cut off. So I'll come up here and I'll just push this up. It's not letting me push it up. It's not letting me push it up. Well, if I uncheck that box and then I come up here, I could push it up. Now in doing so, I'm reintroducing some blank pixels down here at the bottom. But you know what? That's okay because I could easily fix that in Photoshop. So that's where this constraint to image comes in. Uh, you may need to uncheck it to fix your crop so that you have something that got cropped out accidentally with constrained crop, you could bring it back in. So, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna accept this crop, close down the transform tool. Now we have these blank pixels down here. I mentioned I could easily fix this in Photoshop. And those of you not familiar with Photoshop, this is something real easy though. You could do this and I'll, I'll show you. We're just gonna right click right in the image and we're gonna go down to edit in and then go over to edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now it'll take this image, open it up into Photoshop, and we're gonna get rid of those blank pixels. Once it opens, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the magic wand tool. The W key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the magic wand tool. It's actually the keyboard shortcut for three different selection tools, object selection, quick selection, and magic wand. Make sure you're using the magic wand. If it isn't here, just left click, long left click, hold like, click with the left mouse button and hold it and go down to the magic wand tool. Make sure that contiguous is checked uh, or you could add uncheck that for this instance and just click on any of the blank pixels. Now it will select all the blank pixels in the image. Now we're going to use content aware fill but if I use it at this point it's going to put a little thin line right where those marching ants are on the building and it, it's going to look obvious so we don't want that little thin line. So what we're going to do is before we use content aware fill, go up to select, modify, expand. So it's just going to expand our selection by five pixels. So now we're kind of encroaching on the image itself. Now there's different ways and different types of content aware fill in uh, Photoshop. We're going to use the easiest one. Hold the shift key down on your keyboard. And if you have a Mac, hit the delete key with that shift key held in. If you have a PC, hit the return key. You'll bring up the fill dialog box. Make sure you're using content aware. Click OK. And it will take a second to do its thing, but once it does, it filled in those blank pixels. We'll get rid of the marching ants by hitting Command or Control D. And you can see, it did a great job. Now, 
I'm done with this. I want to just bring it back into Lightroom. What I do is I just quit Photoshop. So go up to Photoshop, quit Photoshop. Um, just go to save, make sure you save it and it will save it and then reopen it up, reopen it up in Lightroom. You'll see it just takes a second to save and there it is. So I have now my building upright. It's not falling backwards anymore like the previous one was. There's the previous one that was, you know what, let's go to, I made there, there we go. There is like a before and there's after and there's before and there's after. So I made it stand up straight. I straightened it and I made sure I didn't lose the top of the building and I filled in blank pixels on either corner at the bottom and it looks realistic. I'm all done. So there is a real world example of where this checkbox constrained to image comes into play. I hope that helps you better use Lightroom with your images. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.